In this code example, we're going to be looking at HTML forms and handling the information that comes from those forms. Here we have a simple HTML form. We've got a form tag inside that. There's a few divs. Inside the first div, we have a label and a text input. Inside the second div, there is a label and a select tag with a series of three options. And in the final one, we have a submit button. If I jump over into the code file here, you can see we've got one function, the init function that runs when the code loads, and a second one which we are going to attach. So I'll jump back to the HTML here for one second. You can see that the ID of my submit button is btn submit. What I want to do is I want to hook this up so when I click on the submit button, which will prompt the form to submit, I want that to be the trigger to run my code to do some validation on this form. So in the init function, I'm going to say document get element by ID btn submit dot on click equals validate. Now that's not a keyword or anything, that's just the name of my other function. So here it is, validate. Inside this function, just to check to see that this is working. I'm going to put an alert box and I'm going to jump over to my browser. I'm going to reload this page, click submit button, there it is, there's the hello popping up. Alright, so that's working for me. Back into the script, I will get rid of this hi, we don't need that anymore. I want to get username. That is going to come from this field right here, this text input called full name. So I'm going to get that value and I'm going to get the value from this drop down list. So full name and user type, those are the IDs that I need to keep track of. Document, get element by ID, full name. Now that will get me the element itself, the input tag. What I want is what the user has typed inside of that. So that is the value property. Same thing with the user type. We'll get the document, get element by ID, user type. That is the drop down list itself, inside of which there's a list of options. Every option has a value, every option has a text field as well. What I want is from the select tag, the thing that contains all the options, its value property. It will have the value that the user has selected from that list. So here we're going to check this out, save that, jump back over the browser, reload. Refresh this, okay there we go. So I'm going to type in Bob, and in here I will click on silver, click submit, Bob 2. Now it doesn't say silver here because silver is the text value. We want the number from that list. So back here in the web page, there in the script, username, user type, the values coming from those two fields. If we jump back into the HTML, here's the select called user type. And you can see the value, 2, is what's matched up with silver. That's what we're getting from this form, is the actual value, not the text amount. Okay, so we know that we can get those two values. Now, if I want to prevent or allow the form to submit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the username is empty. So username is a string. It's the value that comes out of that full name field. Strings have a length property which tells us how many characters long it is. I'm going to be putting that inside of an if statement. So if username.length is greater than zero, meaning they've typed something, we're going to allow the form to submit, else prevent the form from submitting. So that's what we want to do here. All right, how do we do that? If we want to allow the form to submit, we return the value true, and we return the value false if we want to stop it. 
So this is going to return the value from the function, either the value true or the value false. That comes back up to the top where the on click was. This goes into the submit button and basically telling it true or false is going to either stop it from doing what it was going to do or allow it to continue. We're stopping it in process. We're saying, okay, forget that the click ever happened. We've done some stuff, sure, but we want to stop it at this point. And that is going to make the form think that the button wasn't pressed. That is what's going to make it think that, hey, the form wasn't submitted. So if I look inside here in the HTML, there's this action field. That's where to send the form when it's submitted. I'm going to say google.ca. There we go, saved. Now, my form, if it submits, will go to Google. If it doesn't, it won't. All right, let's reload the page. Okay, so the form is reloaded. Full name, nothing inside there. Pick a value here, click Submit. Nothing happens. I can click it over and over and over again. Nothing is happening because there's no value in the full name field. But if I type something, click Submit, now it goes to Google. So we know it worked. This return true, return false, either allowed or prevented the form from being displayed. And there we are. That's how we get the value out of the full name field. That's how we get the value out of the user type field. So it's this value property that we need to keep track of.